Hello everyone, in this video we are going to explore another diffusion model based on Flux. This model uses four sampling steps for text-to-image generation. You can also use it for image-to-image -image conversion. Essentially, the model is built on Flux1 Schnell to create a fine-tuned solution for low sampling steps. It's known as the Shuttle 3 Diffusion. Recently, Shuttle 3 has released its latest version called Shuttle 3.1 Aesthetic. This aesthetic model focuses on human anomalies, animals, and various objects, fine-tuning the ratios of these elements within the generated image. Additionally, it requires a minimum of four sampling steps to create an image using this diffusion model. Shuttle AI offers a variety of interesting models on their official website, shuttleai.com. On their GitHub and Hugging Face repositories, you'll find several models. For instance, there's the Shuttle 3 Diffusion model for image generation and the Shuttle 3 model without the diffusion name for language model text generation. This company is doing fascinating work, fine-tuning models like GPTQ and MiniGPT into compact AI models that can run locally on consumer machines or private GPU servers. They also provide diffusion models with GGUF quantizations and FP8 versions. Now let's discuss Shuttle 3.1 Aesthetic. When you visit the model page, you'll find links to both FP8 and BF16 models. Today we'll try the FP8 model for a specific reason. When downloading the model files, you'll see the Shuttle 3.1 Aesthetic Safe Tensor files. The full version of this model is 23 GB the same size as the flux to v model as it is based on Flux for fine-tuning low sampling steps. Additionally, the FP8 version is much smaller, at around 11 GB. Despite its reduced size, the output quality is almost identical to the full version unless you closely compare the two. Using multiple sampling steps with the FP8 model can enhance image details further. Other components like the text encoder, scheduler, and tokenizers are compatible with the same files used in Flux. However, for this demonstration, we'll use the safe tensor files, so there's no need to use the other subfolders in the Hugging Face project. Simply download the FP8 model files and save them in your ComfyUI model folder, either in the Unit or Diffusion Model subfolder. From there, you can load the model using the Load Diffusion Model nodes. In the drop-down menu, you'll find options like Flux1, DevFP8, Safe Tensor, Flux Tools, Fill Safe Tensor, and Shuttle 3.1 Aesthetic FP8. The workflow setup is straightforward. The only difference is using the aesthetic model in the Load Diffusion Model nodes. For the Clip Text Loader, we'll use the FP8 version of the T5 Clip Text Loader. As for the type, we'll select Flux. That's all it takes to configure and use this model. Here, I have an example of a text-to-image workflow. Before using the second sampling step, let's start with the first one and see the results. In this example, I've generated fantasy-style images. For instance, a melting clock rendered in a dreamy surrealistic style. Let's bring in some text prompts. The workflow follows the default settings when loading a standard text-to-image workflow. I've added flux sampling and flux guidance for conditioning, but nothing else has changed. The only unique adjustment is setting the sampling steps to 4. CFG1 is set to follow the same configuration as flux, and the steps align accordingly. Additionally, the VAE is the same as the one used in the flux model. For instance, I've used a text prompt for a melting clock, and the results were generated swiftly in just 4 steps. Now, let's try a new prompt, perhaps a fantasy-style city on a floating island. As you can see, the image generation is very fast, taking only four steps to produce detailed results. While it may not match the quality of Flux 1 Dev or Flux 1 Schnell, the image structure and objects are rendered effectively within this streamlined process. Now, this is a very handy AI model similar to other lightning or turbo AI models where we can use very low sampling steps to generate quick results in a short time. Imagine integrating this with other image editors and connecting it to ComfyUI. You could use it for drawing line art styles and quickly render a full image based on your line art and so on. That's the general flow of using this low sampling step AI model to create an image structure in just four steps. Now, let's try something different, like a subject other than landscapes. I know many people might be concerned about how human characters will look. Will they appear strange like in Stable Diffusion 3? 
the answer is no. As you'll see here, we have a text prompt for a beautiful woman in a Japanese style surrounded by soft water. The result is quite nice. There is, however, one issue with this AI model. The pixels may look slightly rough and not fully rendered within the four sampling steps. This is expected since it's working within such a short time frame to create all the objects. However, we can refine the results later if we like the image structure. For example, if I don't like certain elements, such as flowers floating on the water, I can regenerate the image a few more times using the same prompt to see different variations. While I'm explaining, you can see I'm generating a few other samples. Just like that, we get an image that looks pretty good, such as this one with a clear close-up shot of the character's face. From there, we can refine the image further by using another sampling group. Basically, this type of low sampling step AI model is great for quickly drafting images with your prompts or using image to image generation. Right now, we also have Flux tools with Redux that allow for style transfer using another image. There are many ways to integrate Flux into your workflow. This AI model, Shuttle Aesthetic, is based on Flux, so you can treat it like a Flux model. However, it focuses on quick generation steps to create draft images efficiently. For instance, if I want to refine a draft, I can introduce a second sampling step into the workflow. Previously, I generated a clock image, so let's go back to that. Here we bring the image result into the VAE encoder, where the pixel data is processed. We've already passed data from the get and set nodes using the flux models condition plus and condition minus, as well as the flux VAE. Why do I use the same naming conventions as Flux? Because this model is based on Flux and I treat it similarly. In this example, I initially used 15 sampling steps. Now I'll increase it to 25 steps, which is the typical range for detailed images. Using these additional steps, we can generate a new image. This new image looks significantly better than the previous one. It offers a clearer close-up shot and the flowers and water have more detail. Even with four steps, the results are quite detailed. Let's examine the image preview. Here, I've set the sampling step to 25, and the rendering time is very similar to what I usually experience with Flux 1 Dev. The model generates at a good speed without consuming excessive resources, allowing me to continue video recording during this process. The generated result is fine tuned and highly detailed. For side by side comparison, we can look at the image generated in four steps on the left, and the one generated with 25 steps on the right. The difference is clear. The eyes and other details connect more seamlessly in the 25-step version. Let's generate another image using a different text prompt to see if there's a noticeable difference. While I'm speaking, the model generates a new image almost instantly. With just four steps, the generation time is incredibly fast. There's no need to reiterate this point since we've already seen how effective low sampling step AI models are. However, from my experience, this fine-tuned Flux model outperforms the Flux Lightning and Flux Turbo models in quality, delivering results that look better than the Flux Turbo model as well. And here's the 25-step sampling. Let's check out the comparison. This is the four-step image. As you can see, there are rough pixels in some parts of the image and some shadows. It feels like the rendering isn't fully complete with just four steps, but that's okay. Many low sampling models perform like this because their primary purpose is to draft an image. After switching to 25 steps, we get a better result, even for the character. For example, in the four step version, the character's face is very blurry and the golden armor lacks visible patterns. When we switch to 25 steps, the golden armor becomes clear with all its patterns restored. Even the decorative elements in the background are now properly rendered. This is the second sampling step result. Even though I'm using 25 sampling steps in the second group, it doesn't consume much VR. A significant benefit is that I can still record video while generating the image. When using Flux 1 Dev with FP8 and FP16, I would have to pause the video screen recording while generating the image. Now I no longer need to do that. I can continue recording while generating, which is a big improvement. As you can see here, we're getting more detailed results. Let's try another example like an animal style. We'll explore both human anatomy and animals to see how this performs. Here, 
we've generated a very standard lion against a night sky. It's a simple image, and we'll refine it further with the second group for a more detailed version. First, we have the four-step sampling result. Then, with 25 sampling steps, we achieve a much more detailed image of the lion and the night sky. For example, in the night sky, the stars initially appear as rough pixels. With 25 steps, while not perfectly sharp, the stars become well-defined objects. Similarly, the lion's fur transitions from rough to a more refined state, with individual lines restored. And there you go, we've achieved this result using 25 steps. Now, let's take it a step further by using upscalers to improve the image even more. I've added an upscaler group here, incorporating the tile control net for the ultimate SD upscales. We're using 10 sampling steps to generate another upscaled version of the lion. Here's the final result. Let's compare it with the second sampling image. When we put these side by side, we can see the difference. In the second sampling image, the lion's fur appears somewhat rough, as if the rendering isn't fully complete. However, after applying the upscaling and refining it with another 10 steps, we achieve a smoother and more polished result. The fur on the lion's head is more detailed, and even the paws show significant improvement. Additionally, the stone beneath the lion gains enhanced texture and pattern, with visible scratches appearing in the upscaled version. By using Flux as the base model, the Shuttle 3.1 Aesthetics model is also compatible with Flux tools, which are the latest set of AI models released by Flux. We've discussed these tools before, and they work seamlessly with this model. One of my favorites is the Flux Redux, which I've integrated into smaller groups here. I'm using the Redux Advanced Custom Nodes, which function similarly to the IP adapter. These allow you to set weights, adjust the strength of the Redux reference image, and configure downsampling factors. The lower the downsampling factor, the greater the similarity to the reference image. And right here, we are able to use compatibility with the aesthetic model. The same style of connections can be applied with the flux model as well, so we can choose another image here and try it out with our image ratios. We can use the aesthetic model to generate images quickly with low sampling steps. So how do we connect this with Redux? First of all, from the flux guidance, we connect the positive to the conditions as well as the condition output of these custom nodes. We will pass that to the K sampler, injecting the Flux Redux reference image data between the Flux Guidance and the K-Sampler. Before passing all the data into the sampling steps, we inject whatever image is loaded in this reference and then pass it through. Let's try that out maybe with other styles like landscape styles. We'll use another text prompt, keeping it very simple. No need for complex, long tail descriptions here. Let's move on and see how that looks. We have the first sample image. As you can see, it inherits the reference from the Redux model. You can observe the shape, combinations, and image composition following the reference image. There's also a castle here because of the text prompts we included in the first steps. The reflections of the warm colors in the sky, added by the text prompt mentioning sunlight, are mirrored on the river's water surface. Interestingly, the Redux example itself doesn't have many water reflections. So, we can use Redux? much like IP adapter styles or components, combining it with text prompts to generate new images with added creativity. Currently, we're also waiting for the second sampling to upscale the workflow. Meanwhile, we can check out the second sampling group. First, we have the initial image, and then sliding to the right, we see the second sampling image. It's more detailed, especially in areas like the castle. This time, I've turned the sampling steps down to 10 rather than 25. Even at 10 steps, the generation speed is faster, and the result isn't significantly different from 25 steps. This is because once we perform another sampling, it already adds more details to the image. This AI model is specifically designed for low sampling steps. There's no need to set very high sampling steps to achieve details because it handles that efficiently on its own. For instance, the water in the second sampling step looks significantly better, smoother and more detailed, compared to the first sampling step. The water surface in the second step has improved considerably. There are also flowers on the land in the second sampling, which were absent in the first image. Additionally, we see more details on top. Now here's the final generated result using upscalers. As you can see, 
even in the upscaled image, we've applied another 10 sampling steps. The ultimate upscale adds further details on top without altering the shape or form of the objects, thanks to using 100% tile control net. For instance, there's mist flowing out from the castle behind the mountain, which becomes more detailed here. The sunlight reflections on the water surface are also enhanced. Comparing the second sampling image with the upscaled image, we notice blur and incomplete details in some parts of the second sampling image. After applying the upscaler, these issues are fixed. We now see the mist floating more clearly between the two mountain hills, with the upscaler refining it further. The overall result is significantly improved. The tree branches, even in a distant shot, appear far more defined. Let's check out the castle. The castle has noticeably improved with sharper details. The bricks and the tower at the top of the castle are clearer with sharper coloration. The sunlight too is enhanced, and at the top of the hill the tree branches are much better defined than in the second sampling group. So, yes, try this out. This is the Shuttle Aesthetic 3.1 model, a fine-tuned version based on Flux. Its aesthetic focus enhances static images with four steps. That's it for this video. The workflow will be posted in the link description below. Check it out and I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.